You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Christ Jesus was publicly executed and crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Having started with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so much for nothing? If it was really for nothing, well then, does God supply you with the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing? By doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see. Those who believe are descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who have believed or blessed with Abraham who believe. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until our faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we're no longer subject to that disciplinarian. For in Jesus Christ, you are all made children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. What are the things that you can say by heart? What's committed to your memory so deeply that you'll always have it with you? Maybe it's your childhood phone number or the lyrics to a song that you played over and over again in middle school. Or maybe it's something else like the, the Pledge of Allegiance, or the Lord's Prayer, or the 23rd Psalm. The thing about most of these is that they're not necessarily things that we set out to learn, but that they just kind of became written on our hearts through repetition. Like a, a pathway through the woods, each new time through defines the pathway just a little more clearly, and sooner or later you recognize that these are words that are going to be with you for a long, long time. For the Jewish people of Jesus' day, one of the things that they would have had committed to memory in this way was a, a simple daily prayer. This was a prayer that was expected of all of the men in the community. It was a prayer of gratitude to God, thanking God for the blessings that they had received and for this connection that they had with their creator because of who God made them to be. It's a connection that gave them this identity that oriented them to the rest of their day. Sounds pretty powerful, right? Do you want to hear it? Blessed be God who has not made me a Gentile, a slave, or a woman. Yeah, <laughs> there were some pretty shocked faces at Bible study this week when I shared this prayer with the group. And I think you see now why it was only the men who were the ones who prayed this prayer. But remember, at, at this point, circumcision was the primary sign of the covenant faithfulness between God and people. And it was a sign that it's only available to people with certain anatomical features. I'm not going to try to scrub the patriarchy out of this prayer for you today, but I hope that you can look beyond the surface level language and hear within it a prayer of gratitude for 
being born in a way that lets you have a relationship with God. But if you could imagine having a phrase like that written on your heart so deeply as your home phone number is, then that might give you a window into how radical a thing we hear Paul do here in this reading. Paul's one of the great teachers of the church, and he writes to the believers in Galatia to say, there's no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is a radically inclusive phrase that holds all sorts of promise for us. What Paul is doing here is resetting generations or even centuries of expectations. His readers were trusting their relationship with Abraham and their continued faithfulness to the covenant that Abraham had begun with God so long ago. This covenant begun under Abraham and extended through Moses gave detailed instructions for living that were designed to help people live in ways that honored their neighbors, that honored God, and honored the creation all around them. It was these patterns for living that marked them as a people set apart, made holy for God. So, of course, when people who've had this daily practice encounter new Christians who Paul has converted to the faith in Galatia, they want these new believers also to be inheritors of that covenant promise, to be keepers of these ancient laws that were given to guard and protect people. But Paul, Paul's not having any of that. He wants to be incredibly clear, not just with the Jewish Christians, but with the Gentile Christians as well, that our place before God is secured solely and completely by the work that Jesus does on our behalf. And when we start to try to add things to that, we end up diminishing the work that Jesus has done. He goes on to remind the readers that even Abraham, the one that they can all trace their roots back to, was called righteous before he even knew about the law, much less was able to keep it. Paul reminds them that after the covenant came as a gift to Abraham, it came after Abraham's faithfulness. This is good news for us in these days. It, it's good news because it means that Whatever identities we bring with us, there is space for us in the community of God's faithful people. We don't have to utter a daily prayer giving thanks that we were born into exactly the right circumstances to be a part of God's family. But we can trust that God will meet us right where we are and welcome us home. In the beloved community, that God is building, there is no space for divisions between people because of their ethnic identities or their nationalities, because we're all children of God. There's no space for divisions between those who have abundant resources and those who have none, because we're all children of God. There's no space for divisions between male and female or however it is God made you because we are all children of God gathered together, not because of who we are or what we accomplish, but because we are beckoned and summoned by the one who knows us on our deepest levels and who calls us to be a part of a new community that loves those around us with the same boundless love that God has showered on us. And so, dear friends, it's my prayer for you that God would begin to write new words on your heart. That God would write words that welcome and inspire and include. And that those words would be written so deeply on your heart that you would learn to trust them. And to let them lead you into loving and serving your neighbors. Be well, dear friends. God loves you, and so do I.